the opponent you have tomorrow, Wake Forest. It, it, we talked a little bit last week about the parity in the league, yeah. how balanced it is, and yet you have Wake coming in, yeah. two lost team in conference, and yet the two teams at the top of the conference, Maryland and Virginia, both both of their one loss one losses in the conference came Come two ways. Yeah. So how, how difficult of an opponent is this? They're playing really well right now. Um, as you mentioned, there's a lot of parity in the league, and, but right now we're catching them at a particularly hot time. I mean, they beat. Uh, Virginia, I think, by double figures, and they beat, um, I forget who they have, or they went to Carolina and won by double figures. So they're playing really well. And of course, uh, the key to them is Ishmael Smith. He's playing probably as well as any, uh, any guard in the league. You talk about Ishmael Smith. When's the last time you saw somebody that fast with a basketball? Taiwan Lawson. <laughs> and I'm glad he's not here anymore. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he actually, Ishmael Smith, might be faster than Taiwan Lawson with the ball. So do you, do you put somebody like Moo on him then? No, I think we'll, I, I think Imano will have him, but it's going to be a group effort. He can't go out and by himself, right? Um, certainly, we got to try to slow him down in transition. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, you, know, you you got some youngsters. We, we all know that, but you also have some some seniors, and yeah. juniors who who kind of they're schooled enough to know the big picture, how important every game is. Yeah. How, how do you keep a team not thinking, oh my lord, if we lose this, we're down another home game, et cetera, et cetera. You know what, it, as you mentioned, it, it was, those older guys have been around, so they know the value of you know, holding court. You know, we, we're at home, we got to take care of business here at home. But at the same time, they also realize that we're going through a tough stretch in the season. It we're, we're, seems like every time we look up, we're playing against a team that's ranked, we're playing great. Um, and we know that we just got to kind of weather through this and then see what happens when we get to the back half of the week. Coach, can you talk a little bit too about um, the impact of a close loss like it was to uh, you on the road? Yeah. You missed some free throws down the stretch, had a call go against you. Just I didn't think that. I thought it was a good call. Um, but, you know, we missed the free throws and they made their free throws. It was tough for the guys. It's, you know, we've had some really heartbreaking losses this year because of the effort the guys have poured into it. Just, you know, a break here, a break there. I mean, that, that foul at the end, I put Glenn Rice in a bad spot. You know, we were shooting free throws well. I told myself, if it comes out long, try to tip it out. He just got a little aggressive. The kid had the ball and he was trying to strip it. But I probably should have known better put a freshman in that position. You can we talk then about how that makes this weight game just even more important to stay above 500? Again, yeah, because it's home. Up. Every home game in the ACC is really, really important. You know, we were able to get one back on the road against Carolina. Um, just got to take care of business at home. Man. I mean, these guys are going to come out and play. The one thing I, I know about this team is that they're going to play great defense every night. We're going to give a great effort every night. Now, sometimes our offense, offensive execution isn't where we need to be. But I think especially after the last game, the last two minutes, that was a real um, crystallizing moment for some of our guys understanding, hey, we've got to pay attention to detail in the offensive end of the screen. Because there were some things in the last two minutes of the game that we could have gotten easy baskets, but we didn't execute them. I didn't have to say anything. Uh, I got text messages Monday morning from guys saying, coach, Sorry, I promise we're going to really stop paying attention to stuff now. Coach, there was an article in the uh, Charlottesville paper today mm -hmm. uh, in which he, he said that he teams are starting to figure out move on the offensive end of the court by watching film. Uh, I mean, is there anything to that? On Mufon? Yeah. Uh, I just think he's had a tough time shooting the ball. That's it. Uh, and like some freshmen, um, and like most freshmen, when they not shooting the well, they can start maybe – press a little bit, but I still think that he plays as well defensive as anybody we have. He's a guy that gets loose balls and make hustle plays, and, and he's just got to kind of get back to doing what he did early in the year to get himself in the start line and get all his playing time, and that is he just plays harder than everybody else. He comes out with loose balls, he gets loose balls, he creates transition opportunities for us, and uh, I think he started to do some of that against Florida State. He would have played more, but Glenn Rice and Brian Oliver played so well, I decided to go more with them. That, what you saw in Florida State was, again, more product of those two guys, not necessarily what Mufan was to do. A little side note, what made you decide to do the gesture you're doing with the... Uh, the whole garage? Yeah. Well, uh, Kathy Tyler, somebody that my wife and I have known over the years, her kids go to the same school as our kids, and uh, she talked to you, approach us about going over and visiting. Once we went on a visit, took the team over, I took my kids over there, uh, my three girls, and we realized that it's a, it's a tremendous cause. And if you're not familiar with the whole lodge, I would invite anybody to go over and take a look at it. It's a place where they provide housing for people who are battling cancer. They come from outside the area, and they need a place to stay while they're being treated. So you can stay there up to six to eight weeks, and uh, I mean, sometimes even longer. And uh, you know, we've gotten involved. We had a, a meeting last night, and we're going to have a couple more meetings before the gala on May 22nd. Um, did you ever dream that coaches against cancer think you get this big? 
No, but it's obviously, uh, it's a tremendous organization. I mean, they've taken it from where it started years ago to now. Obviously, we have the Coaches versus Cancer weekend coming up. Well, you'll see all the guys with the sneakers uh, on the sideline this weekend. And uh, they've raised a lot of money, obviously, starting out with, with Coach Valvano, and uh, it's kind of spun from there. Was there ever any resistance you tried?